With different levels of national institutional capacities, social, economic and political realities on the ground make it difficult to institute effective levels of carbon pricing. And so ambitious goals cannot be left to market mechanisms alone. Like any other policy, explicit par carbon pricing schemes have limitations in achieving desired outcomes. And so a suite of solutions will be necessary. Moving the inherent opportunities into effect and at scale will require targeted and consistent innovation policies and sustainable funding mechanisms to promote the large infrastructure requirements to deploy these technologies. It will require direct government spending and mobilization of private capital and re it will also require regional public-private partnerships, such as a longship program and the Northern Light Project in Norway, in addition to procurement conditionalities that create market pull. The ambitious level of cooperation in the form of joint funding, technology transfer, and mobilization of private capital will also require a set of, a set of strict guidelines to ensure credibility and avoid greenwashing activities that hinder progress and suppress serious ongoing and future efforts to limit emissions. These include transparent, robust, and standardized accounting and monitoring systems. It will demand cross-border policy harmonization and align taxonomies for sustainable finance that are inclusive of different solutions and approaches. And finally, in an increasingly ESG-driven investment environment, it's important to develop ESG ratings and standards that are sensitive to the variable capacities and development stages of nations to avoid marginalizing potential players. Achieving a state of net zero on a global level where produced and removed emissions are balanced will most certainly require collective action. National pathways will most likely require the design of carefully crafted industrial and energy environmental policies. However, it's important to consider the evolving energy landscape that will have varying implications on different economies, particularly fossil fuel intensive economies. It's therefore critical that a global net zero pathway is inclusive, with non-prescriptive approaches that allow more nations to play a prominent role in decarbonization efforts and devise solutions that are compatible with their economic and social makeup. Example setting efforts are leading to more ambitious forms of bilateral and multilateral cooperation, with global actors now asserting their role in the energy transition by crafting valuable propositions that capitalize on the global ambition to accelerate action. The announcement of the Net Zero Producers Forum by major oil producers representing 40% of global oil demand last month is a major feat in leadership, one that focuses on commonalities and enhances cooperation. The circular carbon economy framework proposed during the Saudi G20 presidency is another approach that is inclusive and responsive to the social and economic realities facing nations wanting to play a role in fighting climate change. Endorsed by G20 nations, it is one that pragmatically draws on the engineering capabilities of nations, and valuing a wide range of technological approaches and biological solutions to carbon mitigation. It presents an opportunity to extract value from carbon through the direct use of recycling carbon in products and chemical production. To date, the circular carbon economy is a national framework guiding the kingdom's commitment to neutrality. In the EU, Japan, North America, and many other countries, including Australia, governments are devising policies and recovery packages that include key components of the circular carbon economy, namely mitigation policies that encourage the reduction of carbon emissions, such as electrification and renewable energy targets, but also carbon capture and storage options, hydrogen fuels, and energy, energy efficiency improvements.